Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. And today is a great day because I'm going to be giving you a tour of my collection and the speakeasy and our filming set. We're gonna do it in that order. So first we're gonna focus on the whiskey and the bottles and all that stuff. Then we're gonna kind of show a little bit of behind the scenes about you know where I film, where Jamie films, how we kind of do this a little bit. And uh, obviously show off her new set, which we got just got done with yesterday, right before the live stream, which uh, was a, a lot of work, but it's also, I think it came out really, really gorgeous. So we are outside the door to the speakeasy, as you can tell, let's go on inside. Right over here is Jamie's new set, which I'll show you here in just a few minutes. But then right here is what you normally see in Whiskey Row videos, which is the kind of the best bottles of the collection. I'll call them that, that, that I put on, you know, for you all to look at. Then I've got other shelves, other bottles, and, uh, and we'll go into all that in a minute. Uh, before we do, if you end up enjoying this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I usually put the nicest stuff that I have at any time on this shelf and this shelf because those are the shelves that are actually like in view on camera when I'm filming, uh, primarily like the ones here. So you got Buffalo Trace, Weller, Michter's, uh, Orphan Barrels, uh, Discovery, Bardstown stuff. Um, but up on the top shelf, we've got Knob Creeks over on that starting at the far end. Uh, we got some barrel stuff, some odds and ends of uh, the nice Redwood Empire bottles and bonds. Uh, we've got some 1792. There's a, a Willet 4 Uri, Widow Jane 13. Then the 1792's back here. We've got kind of the Jack Daniels section, the Michter section. Now it's not every Michter's, not every Jack Daniels. It really is like the nice bottles from those. And it's, it's not like the nice, nice bottles. It's more of like just what I have. Because there's obviously a lot of better bottles that I just don't have that some of you have. And uh, folks that are more hardcore collectors than I am or have bigger pocketbooks than I do, that they're able to get a hold of and they got nicer stuff than I do. Um, but I do love my collection and I'm happy for it. And I'm grateful for, for a lot of your help in getting some of these bottles. And I'm incredibly grateful to, to, to have this. This is like totally a luxury item. And I know I'm very fortunate and blessed for that. But working our way down, we have some Weller stuff. We've got a, an A. Smith Bowman, a Gingerbread 2, some Stag. What's left of my George T. Stag is, as y'all can see, it is literally about gone. Some E.H. Taylor stuff, Blanton's, um, Orphan Barrel, my uh, Bardstown Discovery stuff. Working my way down. Now this is, again, this is one of the shelves that you can kind of see in the background when I'm filming. But, you know, Elijah Craig 18, got a, lot, a bunch of Elijah Craig Barrel Proofs, then Toasted, some of the Remuses. Uh, some of the Nicrosur Makers Mark, which is really just the FAE 01 and 2. The Knob Creek 15, then some Booker stuff, little books. Um, I have some other Bookers like up in the top corner up by the Knob Creeks up there. I don't know if I'll ever see the Blood Oath 8 because it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty hard one to find. Then my Wild Turkey Master's Keep stuff that I have. Russell's 13, some Sam Houston's in the back. Then this is just kind of an odds and ends of one-off stuff. So I've got a High West Burai, a Fourgate, Midwinter Night's Dram. Uh, smoke wagon uncut and filtered uh, this cream of kentucky you haven't you opened it was just in a recent store hall this is that four roses um o-e-s-o -E out of new york murray hill club a yippie Kaye from high west doc swenson 15 year kind of mixed up back in there uh down here we've got some wilderness stuff uh woodford double oaked peerless double oaked penelope architect one uh, some other stuff, some of the Old Foresters, 1920 back there, an Old Forester single barrel bourbon. Uh, the Kings that I just got, that really proofy 139 one. Um, then we've got some other wild turkey stuff back here. This is the Ambrosia store pick uh, from Russell's that I just absolutely love. Got that Heaven's Door store pick, uh, just a Michter Sour Mash, some Rebel back there, Henry McKenna, Taconic, Iron Harbinger, the uh, uh, Smoke Wagon Small Batch. This is the uh, Harbinger, uh, Iron Harbinger XO or whatever it's called. Larceny Barrel Proof, uh, some New Lou's, George Remus, that Traverse City Whiskey that, did, that I got that's just so good. Rare Character, this is fantastic, it's so good. Bartstown uh, Fusion's down there. And then I got some random bottles on the floor um, right in here. These are just some... Uh, not some of the greatest whiskeys I've ever had, but I got them for some videos. All right, mostly down there, I've got some scotches that I haven't put on the shelf yet. They're uh, just kind of a little bit of a mess there. Uh, I'm constantly running out of space, as you can imagine. Uh, up here is, uh, it's kind of just uh, some random stuff. A couple of Peerlesses, Angel's Envies, uh, Basil Hayden. It's got some Woodford Reserves back there. 
they're, you know, it's stuff. Some of them, I just, I like them. Some I don't. So that, that kind of stuff goes up there just out of the way. Uh, obviously the Willet pot still not my favorite I've ever had. Working my way down. These are some that I do actually really enjoy uh, to start the shelf. Uh, Weller Special Reserve. This is that uh, poor man's William LaRue Weller I made where I barrel aged some Maker's Mark cast strength. That's all I have left of that. Absolutely fantastic experiment. A couple of regular uh, Old Forester Whiskey Row stuff. Sagamore Spirit Double Oaked. Uh, Trails End 8, which is a great, great one. Uh, there's that Balboa Rye I got recently. Last of the Cooper's Craft and then some Horse Soldier. Then I got some Japanese whiskeys, the Hibikis, uh, the Harmony, the, uh, this is that special edition one. Uh, got a Yamazaki 12 year, uh, Haruzaki small batch, Nika coffee grain uh, back there. Then down here is more scotches. You have more of the Islas in the back. Obviously there's these little small tasters, but um, then you get into regular um, Highland and Lowlands and other types of scotches, the Belvenis, the Macallan, Glenlivet, uh, there's a bunch of other ones. There's that muckety muck, that 24, 20, yeah, 24 year muckety muck that's just really, really tasty. And then I've got the other stuff, like I said, that's on the floor I don't have shelf space for. This shelf is mostly Irishes, uh, red breast 12s and cast strengths, the Middleton very rare, some of the spots, Jameson's, Teeling's, Quiet Man, Irishman, Powers, uh, Napogue, uh, Tullamore Dew, and then the drum shambo. That box down here at the bottom has a Michter's and some Buffalo Traces. Uh, down there's some more Irishes on the floor there. So that's where the collection was until I ran out of wall space. And I, you know, really don't have more space. Uh, in this room is, is very long. It's very long this way, but it's very narrow, which is a lot of times why I have the fisheye lens on is because I need to create enough depth of field to get everything in frame. So to go from one side of the wall to the shelves is, is only maybe five feet. So I have to have the camera fairly close, which is why the videos look the way they do, where we have this kind of fisheye lens and we're really limited because of filming in here with the shelves. It can make some things really, really challenging. But that's my shelf space, so that's where things stand. Then we get into shelves that I've purchased. So up there I've got some uh, Courage and Conviction from Virginia, some of the rabbit hole stuff, some Backbone. There's a 1792 foolproof, some reservoir. This is stuff really on this top shelf where I've opened them in store halls and I just haven't figured out where to put them. I, I've run out of space on the shelves. I don't know where to put them, so I leave them there. There's the big bookers I've opened. Uh, there's my next four gate, but I cracked it already. So um, that is a Bluegrass Trilogy 2, which will take the place of the Kelvin Collaboration 3. Once I finish that bottle, that will go on that shelf. Uh, this is another Old Forester single barrel, the Buffalo Trace store pick. Uh, that is a, is that a Sam Houston 15, I believe? Yeah, Sam Houston 15 back there. ASW Fiddler, another Sam Houston 15, which I cracked both of them on a live stream to taste differences a while, long, long time ago. This is Jamie's shelf. Some of it is exceptionally delicious stuff and some of it is not. You have some of the things uh, that are very uh, flavored whiskeys, uh, which she used to love, like the... Uh, the Metcalf's Maple, which is which is solid for, for a flavored whiskey, but that's just, she's grown out of it. Bull Run, this is a great, great uh, Bull Run Maple finished one. It's really good. The Taconic Maple is really solid. But there's also some really good respectable ones too. This Widow Jane uh, Rye finished in Oak and Apple is solid. The She's My Cherry Pie from Maker's Mark is really good. The Milkshake Barrel uh, Maker's Mark is really good. This is the... Uh, milk chocolate truffle we got from the uh, distillery. So the theme on this one is more like really solid stuff that I really enjoy that's not super expensive. That's kind of what goes in this uh, this shelf here. We have High West Campfire, uh, Knob Creek Single Barrel, Michter's Rye, Bell Mead Reserve. That's a good bottle. The Evan Williams Single, that's a great bottle. Four Rows of Small Batch, a great bottle. Um, what else is back there? There's a Balconis back there. Some more uh, High West in the back, Redwood Empire. Uh, old Scout back there, Elijah Craig single barrels, uh, the, the 94 proof, uh, you know, small batch slash single barrel. Knob Creek um, single, what is that, the single barrel reserve at 120 proof. So that stuff, that shelf is just all, for the most part, really good stuff. We have some even cheaper stuff, which again, these are some cheaper ones that I'm still a pretty big fan of. Heaven Hill six year, somebody gave me was solid. 
the old granddad, JTS Brown, Maker's Mark, Jack Daniels Bonded. I just put that there now. Old granddad, 114 is fantastic. The uh, Virginia Highland Whiskey is, is a great bottle. It's almost more scotchy than bourbon, but I didn't want to put it on the scotch shelf because it's not from Scotland. Yeah, there's, some, there's some other stuff. Old Forester, uh, 86, some Knob Creeks. I see, uh, what is that, 1792 Small Batch back there. It's some good stuff. It's stuff I don't drink too often. Some of it's uh, I use for mixers. So it's a pretty good shelf. Can't complain. It's a pretty solid. And then down there on the bottom is just kind of some stuff that... Um, I don't love it necessarily. It's not bad. It's just stuff that I don't get into very often. Um, I set that Evan Williams, and the exceptions are the Evan Williams and that Old Forester. I set them on the ground because they're almost done, and I wanted to be uh, be uh, sure that I grabbed them for cocktails or whatever so I could bottle kill those because those are getting pretty empty and need to get finished. But that's that shelf, and they're pretty much everything on these shelves is open. Here, uh, these shelves are mostly open. There's a few exceptions, particularly in the scotches that I haven't opened yet, but they're mostly open. And then these shelves are obviously are mostly open as well. There are, again, some few exceptions. You'll see some, you'll see some stuff I haven't gotten to yet to open. So this is, this is a box of rum. I do not count this. So when I give you my, uh, my total bottle of whiskey count toward the end of the video, this will not be counted, but there are quite a few, uh, really, really good rums in there. I just don't get to get into them as much as I want box of uh kind of mixed stuff i think there's a, a sazerac a baby sazerac in there as well as some weller special reserves uh, a little bit of blantons that i have left over from the days when i could get blantons then some eagle rares knob creek these are empty uh, but i saved the boxes because i just don't want to throw them away they're the uh, master's keep boxes from wild turkey and i just don't want to throw them away but they're empty so there's nothing special in them the only ones that I have are the ones that you see on the shelves behind uh, when I'm filming. There's the special barrels that I've done some experiments with, my Blood Oath boxes that I didn't want to get rid of because they're so cool looking. Four Roses, another Eagle Rare, some High West Campfire, uh, some Nulu's, uh, Old Elk. Back there is a uh, Wild Turkey Rare Breed Rye, an extra Basil Hayden Toast back when I thought that it had a chance of being good and it turns out I don't like it. Uh, Redwood Empire, Lost Monarchs, another bottle of the Sagamore Spirit Double Oaked, the Thomas Moore Chardonnay Finish. Again, these are bottles that I've done store hauls on, but I just, I just haven't, uh, you know, opened them for some reason yet. Uh, there's that new Castle and Key, couple of um, 1792 bottles and bonds. Coming up to this shelf, we have the George Remus Store Pick, uh, Eagle Rare. Some Balcona store picks. Some of these are store picks. An, an old Overholt 11, 114 proof rye. Um, the Kirkland small batch I never got into. Supposed to be pretty solid from uh, Costco. <laughs> never drank, never tried it. Uh, can, you know, Kentucky Spirit single barrels, Four Roses single barrels, Old Forester single barrels. Still Austin, Horse Soldier small batch. 10 year, 10 cup, um, 1792 sweet wheat, Rittenhouse. Uh, another JTS Brown, Early Times Bottle in the Bond, Baby Sazerac. These are mostly like some special bottles that I want to get into at some point or backups so of special stuff. That's an old, old, old Wild Turkey Kentucky Spirit in that old bottle. It's just beautiful. A Marco Luciano. I've never busted that open. A Pinhook, Cooper's Cask. Cooper and Cask, I mean, some more uncut, unfiltered. Uh, Bomb Burgers, FAE02, Sam Houston... Uh, uh, 14 year and 15 year. Uh, there's some other ones back there. I think there's some Stellum rye. There's a Buzzard Roost. Now working our way back toward the entrance to the speakeasy. Then up here above the door, got an Elmer T. Lee Stag Junior 17, uh, Michter's Barrel Strength, 1792, 12 years, uh, High West Boo Rye Michters that I got from Fort Nelson uh, that has Whiskey Row printed on it. Store hall shelves. And I don't want to show them too quick because, and I don't want to go through them because they're going to be in store hall videos soon. But uh, there's some stuff there and some stuff there and some stuff there. Those are all what I have left to do store hauls on. And that will be the next store hall. And then about half that shelf and half that shelf and half that shelf. And then there's some stuff up there. Uh, that's not mine, that Buffalo Trace, and these are for giveaways. People have already sent bottles for future giveaways, so I just hold on to those. Then I've got uh, my Infinity bottle, actually two of them. There's one in that Tilty bottle right 
there, and then there's another in this smoke wagon. A bunch of samples folks have sent me, glassware, thin equipment. All right, so that is really the collection where I stand. Right now, we are at 521 bottles. Upstairs, there's actually three additional bottles. There's a Buffalo Trace, a big larceny handle, and um, a, uh, an old tub. Various stages of being open, of being drunk, and not being opened at all. It's 521 bottles, and a lot of these bottles, most of these bottles I paid for or traded for. Uh, obviously, the YouTube channel helps to pay for the stuff, which is a, a huge thank you for paying attention to these videos that Jamie and I do for watching the videos because it helps us get bottles. Also, I've already committed um, the stag uh, 17 up there. I've committed that to, uh, to a charity thing, and uh, there's some others that I've mentally set aside for some upcoming charity things this fall. And uh, that's obviously something uh, that hopefully will go to a good cause. So when we are normally filming, this is where the camera sits on this tripod with this in the background. The mic hangs from right here. Uh, it's actually out in Jamie's area because of the live stream last night. Then when we do a live stream in here, this is the video screen that we're looking at and your comments are all over here. So when, in the, when we're filming the, uh, the live streams or doing the live streams with y'all, the camera sits here and we're always looking up here because this is where the chat scrolls. So that's how that works. Um, just counter space, trash can. This is the table uh, I built with the help of the Patreons, which was awesome. And I put up those curtains because on the other side is a bunch of like construction materials. <laughs> so I kind of kept that blocked off, cleaned it up and kind of built this whole space, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to have the nicest place to keep your whiskeys, just make a space and uh, make it your own. And that's kind of what I did in here. All right, so let me take you to Jamie's new area where we can film. Let me walk out of the speakeasy here. And uh, then it's, this is the new space. This is the set we were on for our live stream last night, which was uh, a lot of fun. It was a great live stream. We had uh, just so much fun and, and just love it when you guys hop on and interact with us. But uh, we prepped all this over the last couple of days. This table, here's the lights we film with. Um, I have to move them back and forth between her space and my space now. This is just a stand for equipment. There's the Blue Yeti mic that I'm in love with. Um, some lighting, cabling, whatever. And then this is the room that we turned into kind of this like hangout area. Uh, so we'll be filming in here. And uh, this is actually supposed to be a theater room. So there's no windows in this room, which makes it amazing for filming. Jamie's excited for hers so we can do her Cocktail Friday videos out here. Uh, obviously, she'll still do the Beyond the Row uh, pick ones where she picks a bottle and tries to stump me with what it is, but those will all be done in the speakeasy. Some of you may be asking, why do I not put uh, all of the bourbon out here and make a big set out here? Maybe someday. The, the thinking is that when you come in through the garage, it's into this room, and I didn't want all the whiskey to be out whenever the kids are coming in and out, or we've got friends coming in and out, or whatever i'd rather have the all of the whiskey and bourbon in that room that i can lock and keep closed and keep separate from the kids this is our setup this is our space and thank you uh for watching this video thank you for all the support you give us thank you especially to our patreons for your continued support and until next time find a bottle you love